I'm Judy Zelani, and you're joining us on the Mill Creek Government Channel. Viewers, for our youth, the formative years of growing into adulthood often bring stresses and pressures from lots of angles. Problems at home, issues at school, pressures from friends, lack of confidence from within. They can be exposed to drugs, alcohol, violence, and even gangs. My next guest has been working with youth for many years and has dedicated himself to working with our children to help and guide them to make correct choices in overcoming obstacles. Tom Myers, my guest, is the founder of Youth on a Mission and also uh, you may recognize his name as a martial arts instructor for many years here in the community. Tom, thank you so much for joining us on the program today. Thank you, Judy, for having me. You have a lot of great information to get out. One thing I do want to talk a little bit is, can you share your background with our viewers? Sure. What happened, you know, your background that brought you here today? Okay, I am, Well, maybe we don't have... <laughs> well, I'm, I'm you not, haven't I'm, had a colorful life. <laughs> right. I'm, I'm, I'm going to minimize it. All right. Um, first of all, I want everybody to know that I'm born and raised in Erie, Pennsylvania. So many years ago, uh, I lived and was raised on East 15th Street and East 19th Street and Ash Street. All right. And um, uh, I graduated from Academy High School. Uh, I do want everybody to understand, and the, uh, adults and students that are out there, that I've been bullied all the way up to the 10th grade. And that was the point in time that I decided that I need to do something for myself so that I didn't have that fear or felt that I couldn't go places that other kids went. And um, as a result of that, I read every book on martial arts. Uh, I self-taught myself in the beginning. Uh, I started taking lessons from an individual uh, in Erie. Uh, I practiced six, seven days a week. And as a result of that, my determination was to persevere so that uh, I could be 100% that I was a man that could take care of myself and if I have a family in the future. Uh, and I pride myself with the fact that uh, I persevered uh, because it opened many doors for me. Okay. After I graduated from high school, uh, I went into the military, you know, I went to Vietnam and uh, that was awakening uh, experience and a wake up call, so to speak, uh, to me in a big way. I had no idea of what Vietnam was all about when I was flying over there and when I landed. But uh, I did get a lot of experience over there that helped mold my life to where I'm at now today. I came back from Vietnam, stationed in Fort Seal, Oklahoma for 18 months. And uh, I received my black belt prior to being discharged in Oklahoma. Uh, and my whole efforts of getting uh, discharged, that was pretty much uh, my goal was to teach young people who were going through the same thing I was going through uh, as a victim of bullying. And I wanted to start teaching. I started immediately the next day in my mom's basement uh, to jump forward. Uh, I continue to teach, I continue to practice, and um, I wanted my name to be synonymous with kids. I wanted to be that role model and mentor for kids to be able to have an effectiveness on them to persevere in their life and they could get over bullying. And uh, the way that was is for them to know about me and see some of the demonstrations and uh, listen to some of the things that I had to say that can encourage them to do the right thing because they are somebody. You know, and they have feelings. Uh, they feel pain just like everybody else. And they want to be able to uh, go to different places. So with that being said, I started uh, teaching in Erie. I had several schools. Uh, I contacted the media and let them know that I have a message that I'm trying to reach out to anyone that is affected by bullying or abusiveness, women, children, uh, to, inc to include men. And uh, so I continued with my efforts, and uh, as a result of that, you know, I worked uh, at the Erie County Prison for 23 years as the operations uh, director. Um, and one of my jobs was uh, fingerprinting, PR, uh, running the law library, um, on the classification board for inmates, uh, doing presentations for visitors that had individuals such as uh, uh, students that were acting out 
and they needed a wake-up call, so to speak. Right. And so they were brought to the prison. They referred to me um, by different agencies, and uh, the juvenile court judge, um, Judge Anthony approved it, the warden approved it. Uh, at the time, uh, I believe it was our first executive uh, director, um, Robbie Robinson, that approved of it, and the Board of Commissioners approved So I started it. And when I was discharged after I retired from the prison in 2002, um, they welcomed that I continue it in the community and provided me with the necessary uh, tools to and do that. So is that sort of the premise and how Youth on a Mission got started? Yeah, well, the Youth on a Mission team got started in 19, uh, February 18, 1990. Oh, okay. And that got started when a couple friends of mine were at uh, Villa Maria College for a kickboxing tournament. All right. And I ran into some of those black belts that I haven't seen in a while, and they were all local. And uh, due to the fact that I was doing a period of the time in the late 80s that gang violence got to be prevalent, and I brought up the subject that we need to do something for our young kids. Too many of our young kids are shooting each other. Violence is running rampant. Uh, they're confused, you know, like animals in the wild kingdom, so to speak. Back when I was a kid, we called it the jungle, but no, it's the wild kingdom. They don't know what they're doing. You know, they just want to have power. Right. And they want to be able to uh, get through forcing respect on others for them to receive it, and it doesn't work that way. Mm -mm. So with those four, in the, with those three individuals and myself, we got together uh, that following week, sat down, brainstormed, how do we want to go about this, uh, what we want to call ourselves, and uh, we came up with a name, Youth on a Mission Team. Uh, actually, it was the United Brotherhood of Martial Arts first, and then a good friend of us, an adult, uh, a man who I well expect in our community, said, well, no, why don't you focus on Youth on a Mission and put United Brotherhood on your logo at the bottom, mm -hmm. like I have here. Exactly. And uh, I said, that makes sense. I said, because our focus is about the youth. It is. Our whole purpose is to be role models and mentors, mm -hmm. and that's what we want to do. So that's how it started. We started off with events to draw everybody together. Okay. And we wanted to have it at Frontier Park. I wanted a central location. I didn't want it in the hood on the east side, the hood on the west side, or in the north or the south. I want it centralized, because this is not about race. This is not about ethnicity. This is not about religion. So you want a common ground. I wanted a common ground. Mm -hmm. And the city supported me, county government supported me, and the leaders of the community supported me, as well as all the sponsors who had contributed for us to put it on, because we had no charge for all our events. Everything was free. Wow. From Obstacle Course, which was the first, everybody competed mm -hmm. in it, and they received a uh, certificate of award. They had free hot dogs. Nothing was charged. Tug of war. And the biggest got to be during the uh, 19... I say about 2001 was our annual Easter egg hunt. <sighs> it pulled people in over the thousands. I know it did. It, it, it was one of the most fantastic mm -hmm. things, and it brought people together mm -hmm. so that we could communicate. You have so many different programs going that you've worked with. They all involve children or women right. and men. But I mean, you, you, what I see from what I'm looking at your different programs. You want to be there for the underdog. You want to give them self-confidence without turning them into a bully. Right. You want them to be self-assured and not be looking for um, somebody else, their um, acceptance. Right. They got to accept themselves, right? right? Am, am right. I correct, Tom? Right. right. In, in the different things that, that you talk about. You've got a program, it's called Children on Guard Program. Do what works and don't waste time. What is that all about? Okay, the uh, Children Guard program uh, is a program that I founded in 1979. And the purpose of that was to bring young people together who were more or less pacifists, nonviolent, uh, didn't believe they could protect themselves, but was in fear, but wanted to have fun, but they was always threatened by the so-called bully. Okay. You know, and um, so the program is about self-preservation. All right. Okay. Mind and body discipline. That's what martial arts is uh, built around. Mind and body discipline. Think about what you're doing. Train, get your body in shape to accept certain punishes, punishment and be able to execute the necessary techniques to protect yourself. But it's not all about fighting and, and, and defending yourself. It's also about knowing how to evade certain situations, being proactive for prevention. And if you see somebody gathering around, 
and you know they're up to no good, go the other way. You know, uh, that's what I did a lot as a kid. Mm -hmm. And then just like, in the, like I said, in 11th grade, I decided that enough is enough, you know. Um, but the whole program is based on them learning how to uh, develop their body to stay in shape. And like I said, and one of my things uh, is exercising. I believe it at 100%. And uh, my slogan is exercise to stay fit for the mind and body to benefit. Okay. okay. I don't care what kind of exercise you do. You don't have to do it for a long time, but be consistent in what you're eating. You know, too, a lot of people eating junk food. I mean, we are obese. We are an obese country, you know, and they've gotten away from really exercising uh, or doing anything to uh, keep themselves in shape, uh, eating the right food. You know, think it. What keeps me young? People say I don't look my age, you know, that's a matter of opinion. Uh, I definitely say that um, I don't feel my age at all. Uh, I surround myself with young people. You know, that may be my fountain of youth, so to speak. You know, and I love them. I love to see the little kids when I used to work at several schools in the uh, community. Uh, the little kindergarten and first grade girls would come up to me and want to hug me. And I said, no, no, no. We do the fist pump. That's mm -hmm. fist pump for power, for academics and self-control of behavior. And even in my karate class, mm -hmm. I do okay. the same thing. You know, it's all about pride, respect. You know, um, we need more of that. And adults need to set an example as opposed to uh, saying things and not practicing what they preach. Because young people are so observant of adults yes, who they keep are. telling them the wrong thing, and they witness. Uh, the activity is going around in the house. I've heard it all. I'm sure you, uh, Tom, I'm sure you have. And I think that's why it's great that you do have these programs because some of these youths are victims of their circumstance. Exactly. And they don't see the outside forces exactly. that can help get them on a different path. Right. And that's where you come in right. and you want to help guide that. Another thing I know you do have, you've got self-preservation classes for children and women. Right. And that is a self-defense, correct? Right. You know, I stay away from the word self-defense and karate because it seemed to have a negative effect on people. Almost and like fighting? Exactly. Mm -hmm. So I try to use a term, self-preservation. Okay. Okay. All right. And um, self-preservation is the first law of the nation. And you have to learn how to survive, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and I have one for women and I have one for children. And that's a matter of making yourself aware, especially women who are vulnerable and gullible, who feel like they can trust everybody. In today's world, I don't know where they've been, but they still continue to want to trust everybody, whether, whatever reason they have. It's a negative because they are professional predators and um, perpetrators. That when a lot of guys, and yes, I'm going to use this term, when they're locked up, they sit there and think how to get even, how to get back at somebody that's done something to them. Uh, but they don't think about if you do something to somebody else's uh, relatives or friends, it can come back and haunt you. Mm -hmm. Because see, in prison, um, news spread quicker than a person that is arrested and has to go through arraignment and at the county, uh, at the city jail. Right. By the time that individual gets to the prison, everybody knows. They watch mm -hmm. the six o'clock news mm -hmm. <laughs> religiously. Right. You know? Right. And so when that person gets there, they already know that's so and so. Mm -hmm. He did this to my mother. And then we got a problem. Mm -hmm. Okay. Kids that are doing and making the wrong mistakes and breaking the law, they have to realize that eventually karma is going to come into their life. You reap what you sow. What goes around comes around. Exactly. What you get away with yesterday will catch up with you manana tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And I believe in that 100%. Mm -hmm. But a lot of them don't have the patience to wait. You know, and that's that uh, patience is a virtue. You know, you got to learn how to do that. Right. You know, it takes practice and it just takes the willpower to persevere for your best interest and the best interest for everybody that loves you. And that's why I think these classes that, that you put on are so helpful to women and children. How often are you, do you usually hold uh, the self-preservation classes? The self-preservation classes is really, uh, well, I teach at Asbury Church now as of this year. Okay. I started to go back. Um, and um, right now that's once a week, sometimes twice a week. All right. But um, self-preservation classes are set up when someone calls me 
from their organization or club, uh, whatever affiliate that they belong to. Oh, all uh, right. They can call me and I will do it. Um, like <laughs> the list that I have here, mm -hmm. there's numerous places that, you know, uh, the Welcome Wagon, Rape Crisis Center, um, uh, numerous organizations that can give me a call. The Women's Expo, um, I had a meeting with the two coordinators of that. Um, that's one place that I want to get to. Right. You know, uh, I had planned to be there this year because there's a lot of women there and they need yes. to hear the message. And I don't try to sell any of my programs, so to speak. I just try to make them aware that you need to be aware of the consequences and the situation you put yourself in could cost you your life mm -hmm. or cause very harm uh, to your body, and which is going to affect your whole family. Mm -hmm. There's too many self self-righteous, self-centered, self-people that only think about self. And nobody does anything until it happens to them. They don't care about what's happened to your family. They don't want to get involved. That's how it's been working. That's the way I see it. Mm -hmm. And there's no trust. Now, I'll tell you, though, you uh, have been very active in the Wake Up Call program. Right. And you have been able to work with many of our schools throughout the years. Right. When you come and you talk with these children, tell me a little bit about the, the wake up call program that you would present to our youth. Um, this is probably one of the biggest programs that I'm more proud of than um, Well, many in my others. opinion, you got to be proud of everything <laughs> well, that you've I, done I, here, I am. Tom. This, I, this, really, is, this, is, this is, this is, I agree. This is, this is the last hurrah to address the issues of uh, violence, bullying, class clown, um, uh, that of education, mm -hmm. peer pressure. Peer pressure to me is probably the main ingredients that control most of these kids. When they're down and low, those who are already practicing, um, trying to drum up allies, so to speak, All right. they know the kids to get into the perpetrating. Look, come with me, I can help you. I know you, I've been through this and that. I've seen it. Uh, it has affected mm -hmm. uh, relatives okay. of mine. Right. So I'm not uh, one is excluded from being victimized mm -hmm. or relatives and close friends of mine. Okay. Uh, and kids, when they're weak, they will go for anything as long as they have somebody who listens and, and talk their language and, and accept, accept them. them. That's, exactly. That's what they're looking for that's at that it. age. That's it. Uh, well, well, one of the other things that's very important that they're missing out of their life is... Uh, Passion and compassion. Okay. You know, they don't want you to say I love you and like like as everyday say bye, see ya. That's the way they look at it. There's no there's no true uh, deep feeling when I hear somebody say, I love you. You know, it's like saying, Goodbye, see ya, have a good day. Same thing with Happy New Year's, Merry Christmas. It's not there. Their heart and, and, and their soul is not into it when they say it. And my thing is don't say it to me if you don't mean it. Don't just mm -hmm. say it because it's, mm -hmm. it's appropriate for that time. Right. You know? Yeah. So um, a lot of young kids are expressing themselves with, uh, through their body language, facial expression, uh, piercing of their body, tattooing their party, uh, body. And uh, I've experienced that. I've accepted it. If that's the way they feel they can get their message across, then so be it. As long as you show respect. Self-control, mm -hmm. right. that is the main, and getting a good education, it's not interfering with that. I don't care what you do, mm -hmm. you know, period. But the wake-up call does address all of that and plus, and I make them aware of the fact that uh, if you have anybody that has been incarcerated, your dad, your mom, your sister, your brother, your cousin, your next-door neighbor, it is not the end of the world. You are somebody, and I want you to realize that it cannot affect you. You can still persevere. You know, don't let anybody talk down to your mom or to your dad. Your mom and your dad are there forever. If you never see them in your heart and in your mind, you will experience that right. feeling. And you'll wish one day that you can get back together with mm -hmm. them. But never should a parent play another parent against another parent to get, a side, to get on the right side of a son or daughter. I think that's one of the most evil things that you can do, and it creates more hate and dissension dissension in a relationship. Mm -hmm. And all it does is confuse the child. It totally refuses. They, it causes them to want to rebel more. Exactly. You know, everybody had kids that they used to talk, where well, they talked to, and uh, while they're talking, they go in the bedroom, slam the door, shut up, I don't want you to talk to me, you're stupid. All of that, you know, we've lost a lot of self-control, but we can get it back if we unite. 
You know, mm -hmm. my main model is united to live, learn, provide, and survive together. I explain that to my students every week. And when I go to do presentations, I see the expressions on their face because I hit a nerve. And it's like they wanted to say it, but they hear it from right, me. Right. And I don't mince my words. Mm -hmm. No, no, that's one thing you don't. <laughs> I know that. Um, I'll tell you one thing. You also, and I just want to mention this too, you are also uh, an author. And Tom has actually, he's written a book, it's called Pick Up the Phone and Listen. And what's so interesting about it, everything that we've talked here about with Tom and what he feels is so important is really right there. It's almost like a handbook uh, for, for a parent or aunt, uncle, yeah. uh, big brother, sister, to recognize some behavior right. and maybe how you can help alleviate right. bad decisions. Right. Not bad. It's incorrect decisions. Exactly. Exactly. They aren't bad. They're incorrect decisions. Right. For, right. for their life. Right. Exactly. Um, yes. I wrote the book. It came out in December 2014. Um, and the I was going to persevere to write this. I'm not a writer per se. Okay. I've been working on this book. For but you had a message. I, I did. And, and I, I did. think that's what was so important is it was his way of getting the message out to right. everybody. Right. Maybe you don't know Tom. Maybe you haven't been to any of his um, presentations. Right. This is this is a way to gather all the information that he's gained through all these years. Right. So Tom was kind enough to drop off a book for me, and I have read it, and I I think it it's great. It, Thank it's you just very a, much. It's Appreciate just a that. great little handbook. Right. And it uh, your wake up call program is absolutely fantastic. Thank you. Now you do, now you still, you're active in the self-preservation classes right now, correct? Right. And you would be um, available to anybody who wants you to come and speak with their organization, right. their school, anything like that. Are right. you in any of the schools at this time? Not at this time. I was, a, I was worried about that because I, I'm <laughs> going to say budgets, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, um, uh, and it's, it's more or less like, well, like a stipend. Yeah, it's just to cover the essentials for me to get there, that type of thing. Uh, um, and all the schools are waiting. Um, I did do a presentation, I, if, uh, I can say this, I did do a presentation at Blessed Sacrament in April. Okay. I received the call that uh, the principal and the staff were concerned about the, uh, gang uh, the gang activities that were taking place there. Not from gangs per se, but from their students who were emulating, Im emulating oh, okay. and imitating, who were you know, dropping their pants down half mass. And they don't even know the name of that. It's called sagging. You know, uh, and I, I got a serious problem with that, you know, because it's disrespectful. You're showing, you know. But they're just trying to emulate and trying to be it's, cool. Huh? It's their way. In their way. It's, their, it's, cool. it's their way of exhibiting their power. Right. And okay. they know it hurts you. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and, and there's a lot of people don't understand where it started. I did research. You know, and I brought it to the school, and I asked them mm -hmm. questions. They couldn't ask. They couldn't answer any questions. You know, where did the bloods? Where did the crips start? You know, uh, what is sagging? You know, what is the? I've been to gang seminars and have you? Uh, oh, yeah, uh, gang seminars in Erie, mm -hmm. out of town, mm -hmm. uh, Harrisburg for safety and security and prevention for our youth, and Pittsburgh. Uh, I've been there quite a bit. Okay, uh, I have a lot of experience. I'm not um, an expert by no means. I just go by my experience, you know, and what I say I can back up in anything that I say. And I love doing presentations. I don't care if it's adult, because uh, I get into it. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I, I try not to make it boring, but I try to make it a learning experience to where you're on the edge of your seat at, like at a good movie when I'm talking, because I'm moving. Yes, I might pick on you. Maybe I won't pick on you. I may pick on somebody else, but you're going to get something out of this. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to use the word picking, but I may select you. You know, and uh, we do role plays, you know, and women, and, and, and the youth, they enjoy it. Right. You know, mm -hmm. the school is, 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 is like uh, something that is uh, a lot of power f to my heart because yeah. I see the expression. I get standing ovations, you know, and I'm not one to brag. I mean, I got many Tom, standing ovations. You do an absolute wonderful job. Our, we're at the end of, of our program. Our time is up. But I want to thank you so much for taking the time and joining us. And viewers, uh, if you're interested in hearing more of what Tom has to say, uh, or even to have him speak to your organization, um, you know, or your your group, your organization, right. um, scout troop or something like that, right. give him a call. Please give him a call. And if you're interested also in the self-preservation classes, he'll be glad 
to have you join mm. on board. Tom, thank you so much. You're very welcome. You do a wonderful job with our youth, and I thank you for everything that you've done for all the years. It's not something Tom just decided to do. This has been his life mission. So It's my passion, and um, if anybody needs to contact me, if you don't mind, the number is... 392-9464, and I'll be glad to talk to you and set something up for your organization. Okay. Thank you so much, You're Don. very welcome. Viewers, there you have it. Again, if you want to give them a call, please feel free to give them a call. Thank you for tuning into the Milker Government Channel. Until next time, have a wonderful day. You're watching the Mill Creek Government Channel, powered by WQLN Public Media.